Since it's the holiday season, let's paint this super easy Christmas painting. I've got a bunch of airbrush painting tutorials on my channel, and I think this one is the simplest and easiest one so far. And the best thing about this one is that anyone can paint this right now. It's great for beginners as a first painting or experienced painters looking to warm up or get some practice in. And here's the completed painting. It's not perfect, it has its flaws, but that's kind of the whole point of this tutorial. I'll show you how you don't really have to dread making mistakes. You could use those as a learning tool to help you in the future and still end up with a decent painting at the end of it. You could paint your painting any size you'd like. I set up a small canvas here, which is about nine inches high by 14 inches in length. You don't have to paint this on canvas. You could use any smooth surface you like, like paper, maybe a synthetic one like Yupo paper. I just recommend putting a layer or two of gesso on it so that you could soft erase into it. The first thing we need to do is draw in our outlines. Now, I'm not gonna be using any grids on this one. We're gonna basically be drawing this in freehand with a few tools to help us out. To draw in the Christmas ornament, you could use any sort of circle template that you have. I'm just using a roll of painter's tape that I had lying around, and you could use anything that you have within your house, maybe the bottom of a coffee cup, or maybe a DVD or a CD, something like that, just so you get a circle in. It really doesn't matter which size that you decide to draw this. The best option would be an airbrush shield or a circle template like this one, but like I said, anything will work. Since I'm gonna be mainly using transparent paints, I wanna keep my pencil drawings very light. So the pencil I'm using for this is a 2H. Above the circle, I'm gonna place in a horizontal line and then two perpendicular ones to basically draw a small square above the circle. And above that, I'm gonna draw in this small rectangular shape and this is where the ornament is gonna be hung from the tree. When you're drawing freehand or sketching like this, you don't have to worry about trying to get everything in perfect. Just try to get these basic shapes in. We're gonna have a lot of wiggle room later on when we start adding the paint. We could adjust it then. But for now, this initial drawing is gonna be kind of like our signpost or our guide. It's gonna tell us where we're gonna to need to put the paint later on when we start using some frisket. Within this first square, I'm just gonna sketch in these two shapes, kind of decorative patterns that almost look like teardrops. I wanna get both of these pretty similar in size and about the same width. So after I sketch the first one on the left, that's gonna be my guide for the one that's gonna be next to it on the right. And I'm gonna to try to sketch this one in about the same size as the initial one. Again, perfection is not the goal here. We're just trying to get these in so we have a guide of where we're gonna add our frisket later, which is eventually where we're gonna be adding our paint. I wanna sketch in this small string just above the ornament. And then I wanna to move to the background and just start adding in some shapes and some lines where the background is gonna be extremely out of focus. We're gonna go for that bokeh or that bokeh look where we have a very wide aperture from the lens and the ornament is in focus and everything behind it is gonna get soft and blurry. So for this background, what I recommend doing is pay attention to the reference that I showed in the beginning of the video, maybe take a screenshot of it. And then while you're looking at that, squint your eyes and pay attention to where you see these random shapes of dark and light. When something's gonna be out of focus like this, you have a tremendous amount of room for error. Nothing has to be perfect. So just try to sketch in with your pencil where you see some darker shapes and where you see some lighter shapes. And I'm using my circle template here on the left side to just add in a few small circles here to make it look like some lights in the background which are out of focus. And this next part isn't necessary, but if you wanna clean up these lines, I recommend using a ruler and you could just kind of square up these uh, angles here and try to get everything in a little bit sharper than what you did initially, just freehand. Now there's a ton of ways to mask off areas. Some people like printing out an image and cutting it out. My favorite is using frisket film. So I'm placing a small piece of frisket right over this ornament. Then I'm gonna take my X-Acto blade and do the best I can to cut around the outer contours of this circle. Replacement X-Acto blades are cheap, so I always swap out my blade for every new painting. And as long as it's a fresh blade, you don't really need that much pressure to cut out the frisket. And you may find it a bit difficult to cut out frisket the first few times you do it, but this gets pretty easy pretty quickly. After about four or five, you get the hang of it and you understand how much pressure to use. So just practice, you'll get this down in no time. Once it's cut out, I'm gonna remove the outer part of the frisket and I wanna make sure I save this. So I'm placing it on the side, I'm just placing it on the wall because we're gonna need this later when we actually paint in the ornament itself. But for now, we'll leave this part of the frisket on where the ornament is itself, and we're gonna start painting in the background first. 
The color in my airbrush right now is five parts moss green to about two or three parts of sepia. This is gonna give me a very muted green color. It's almost gonna look brown on the painting. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at my reference, which I'm putting up on the left side of the screen now, and trying to pay attention to where I see some of these darker, deep shadow shapes. And as I said earlier, what we're doing here is we're trying to mimic the effect of a photograph that's taken with a very wide aperture, maybe two or 1.8. When a photograph is taken with the aperture wide open, we get a very shallow depth of field, which means the subject, which is the ornament here, is very sharp and in focus and the background blurs out. So to paint that blurry effect, we're just gonna take advantage of what the airbrush does best by spraying a very smoky, soft background. I don't wanna use any sort of erasing tools for this or any sort of shields. I just wanna let the airbrush do all the work by giving us very soft and seamless transitions between values. The color that I'm using is transparent. So when you mix it yourself, you're gonna see that the mixture almost looks like a pure black color. And if you're new to airbrush painting, the way that you achieve different values, meaning some light areas and some darker areas, is just by the amount of paint that you spray. For any of the darker areas, like these areas that I'm circling right here, I just sprayed more paint. And for the lighter, softer areas, I sprayed less and maybe held the airbrush back a little bit further, maybe six, seven inches away, just so you get a very soft dusting of paint on the canvas. The best thing about painting areas which are out of focus is that you can paint them messy, for lack of a better word. What I mean by that is that you just don't have to go into too much detail or get everything perfect like you would have to in a portrait. If some of your dark shadows are a few inches higher or lower than mine, it's really not going to make that much of a difference. Just try to get it close to what you see and you're gonna be fine. From here, I'm switching over to the color opaque white. I didn't dilute this, I'm using it directly out of the bottle and I'm just gonna start spraying in the highlights. Just like the shadows, I wanna make sure that I'm doing this entirely freehand. I want that airbrush to do the work for me. I don't wanna use any sort of shields or masks. Now, one of the reasons I don't like to use opaque white in any sort of airbrush painting is that you'll notice here that some of these lighter areas start to get a little bluish. For this painting, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna affect much because the green of the tree in this background is basically a mixture of blue anyway, right? Green is blue and yellow. So it's not gonna have too much of effect if we get a bit of a blue shift. But if you're working on something like a portrait, this color shift is an absolute nightmare. It's a real pain. So that's why I only use transparent colors on more advanced paintings. What I'm doing now is switching over to the color green. This is moss green, diluted about 10% with distilled water. And what I'm gonna do is just lightly glaze this over the whole painting. I'm just going over the area that I just painted adding some more paint to the shadows, and then lightly dusting this color on the highlights. This way, any of that blue-gray shift that we were getting from that white really gets minimized. And you may notice for the majority of this part of the painting, you don't even see my airbrush. That's because I'm holding it pretty far back, at least six inches for the majority of this. That way, I get those very soft, smooth transitions. Of course, when I want an area darker and a bit tighter, you'll see I'll move the airbrush closer, but usually no more than two inches. For the left side of this painting, I'm using the color Scarlet, about 10 parts Scarlet with one drop of moss green in it just to help dilute it and desaturate it. And I just wanna lightly spray this color across this whole left side just to fill in this background, kinda get rid of that white canvas. And you may notice that this color when sprayed onto the white canvas looks pink. That's because Scarlet is a transparent color. And what's happening is the red is optically mixing with that white canvas and the color red and white gives us the color pink, so that's what we see when we look at this. And the last thing I'm doing is very simple. I'm switching back to the color opaque white and spraying in these circles. This is gonna make it look like there's some lights in the background, which are really out of focus. And that's pretty much it for the background. You don't have to get carried away. I'm gonna go over some areas and clean them up, maybe brighten up some areas, but you really just wanna keep this simple. Make sure everything's soft and blurry. And at this point, the painting looks kind of messy. It looks strange. Everything looks very abstract, but that's kind of the point. After we paint in the ornament, our brains are gonna kind of fill in what we're seeing in the background. It's gonna notice the stuff on the right, being a tree that's out of focus, and the left side maybe a wall with some Christmas lights. I decided to add some more colors in the background. I switched over to some blue. This is cobalt blue. I added a few bits of blue in the background to make it look like maybe there's some ornaments or something on the tree. And of course, any white that I sprayed over the tree, I wanna go back to that moss green and glaze it over the top just to negate any of that blue shift. And from here, we could remove the frisket and then start painting in the ornament itself. 
The first thing I want to do for this is take out the negative that I cut out before and do the best I can to place this over the top. This part can be a bit tricky, but you definitely get some play within the frisket so you can kind of adjust it and move it around to get it to fit perfectly. To make it easier for me, what I like to do is just line up one side so I got the right side of the circle masked in, pretty much lined up perfectly with that initial cutout. Now I'm gonna switch over to my airbrush. Color I'm using here is Scarlet. Now I'm using this directly from the bottle. The reason that I'm using this directly from the bottle is that if you dilute it too much with distilled water or reducer, you increase the likelihood that some of that paint is gonna seep underneath the frisket film and kind of bleed onto the area that we just painted. When you're using the paint directly from the bottle, it's thicker, so it makes it a bit easier to prevent this. And if you spray too much paint, just really hose it out in the beginning, I guarantee you that that paint is gonna get underneath the frisket. So it's very important here to go slowly, put some paint on, and then just spray some air over the top of it let it dry, and then add some more paint. Slowly build up this value. I lined up the left side of the circle, and I also put a piece of masking tape there, which is gonna act as a dam to prevent any overspray from getting on the left side of this canvas. Now I'm just looking at my reference, paying attention to where I see some darker areas and some lighter ones, and then doing the best I can with this one color to replicate it. As you can see in the reference here, the darkest area is gonna be on the right side, so we're gonna spray some more paint there, and then as it moves along to the left, that's where the light's hitting it. So we're going to have some brighter highlights. In a bunch of my other videos, I've always said that your skills and observation are way more important than following rules. And I think painting this ornament shows a very good example of that. If we simplify this, technically the darkest value is on the right side, and then the highlight is on the left side. But if you pay attention to what you see in the reference, you'll notice that there's a lot of light sources on this one. So we're getting some strange things. Within our highlights, we have some subtle shadows like this one right here. And then within our midtones and shadows, we actually have some highlights and some specular highlights. And of course, this is because this ornament is on a Christmas tree. And as we know, a Christmas tree has lights on it, hundreds of small lights, and each one of these lights is gonna reflect off the ornament itself. So if you just pay attention to what you see, painting becomes a lot easier. Like I noticed these three specular highlights here. So I'm switching over to my eraser and I'm just scratching them out. And for these highlights, I'm just gonna use a small circular motion starting in the center and then working my way out. And of course, because this is a gessoed surface, I could adjust how much paint I pull out. So I use more pressure in the center to make it brighter. And then as I move along to the outsides, I just use less pressure on that eraser. I'm spraying some more red over the ornament, but I think I've reached the limit on the right side. This is basically as dark as that scarlet red's gonna get. So I'm using the color black now, and I'm lightly glazing that over the right side of this ornament. I generally like more muted and desaturated colors in my paintings. So for this shadow, instead of using black, if you'd like, you could use blue or blue violet. That's gonna work well give you some more saturation and more vibrance to the painting. But I think the color black is gonna work well for what I'm going for. You just need to be careful with it because this color is very dark and a little bit goes a very long way. So after I've got this painted in, I can remove the frisket to see what this looks like. We can see that the outer contours of this sphere are not perfect, it's not a perfect circle. But since this is a quick little painting or a study, it's not a big deal. So instead of getting caught up in a mistake like this and thinking this painting's terrible, I should just toss it out and start over, I'm just gonna continue along and see what I can come up with. So on the right side, I notice that there's a specular highlight which is catching and reflecting some light. So I just use my eraser to remove some paint along the outside there. And I also notice that there's another specular highlight along the left side, along the outer contour of it. So I'm doing the same thing using my eraser to remove some paint there as well. Now, if I was going for a more advanced painting or a more realistic one, I'd probably glaze some color over these highlights just to shift that so it's not pure white like it is now. But again, this is a simple painting. I'm gonna leave them like that. It'll work just fine. So let's move along to the top and finish this painting up. And the first thing I'm doing here is using my electric eraser to scratch out some paint so we could have this string just above the ornament where it connects to the tree. We'll be adding some shadows to this later, but for now, it's a good idea just to pull out the highlights so we know where this is gonna be. I cut out the top part of that frisket so it's easier to line up, and I'm just lining it up with the top part of this ornament. And just like before, I'm gonna add a small piece of blue painter's tape on the left side here, that's just gonna help prevent overspray from getting on the left side of the canvas. One habit that I've picked up over the years is that when I'm spraying with my airbrush, I'm generally aiming it from right to left. 
This way I'm focusing my overspray to the left side of the painting. That way I don't really have to be concerned with overspray to the right of where I'm painting. It's always gonna be to the left, so I'll use some more masking tape or some frisket toward the left side to help minimize it. Now the top part of this ornament is metallic and I just wanna try to copy what I'm seeing. And with any metallic surface, it's usually high contrast, a very dark darks right next to very bright lights. So the color in my airbrush is sepia. This is gonna work fine for that color. And I just wanna try to map in these shapes using some shields. And if you don't have any shields that fit a curve like this, it's really easy to make your own at home. You could just take some pieces of paper, cut out some curves, they'll work just as well. And just remember that no airbrush shield is gonna fit any curve absolutely perfectly. So you're always gonna have to adjust it and move it around, just like what I'm doing with my shields. And at this point, I would say this is basically good enough. So what I wanna do is remove that frisket film, then switch over to the eraser and start scratching out some highlights. I'm starting on the left side here, and this area is really bright, so I'm using a lot of pressure on this eraser, just removing as much paint as I can. And when you use a stick eraser like this to erase paint, you're never gonna remove all of it. Some of it is always gonna be left behind. So if you'd like, you could do what I'm doing now, switch over to an electric eraser. That's gonna be a lot more aggressive and pull out a lot more paint. So I use that electric eraser on the left side to make these highlights a bit brighter. And on the right side, we still have a highlight, but it's a little bit darker because that was done with the stick eraser. I also want to use that electric eraser to pull out a very bright specular highlight on the right side here. And then I'm going to go around with this sepia and just kind of fill in some of these areas in between here just to help darken them up. I also want to add some small shadows to the lower part of this string, which is connecting the ornament to the tree. So all I'm doing is lining up my shield here, spraying the paint directly on the shield allowing some of the overspray to get onto that string. So we have a very subtle shadow there. And that's it. In about an hour, two hours max, you can complete this simple little Christmas painting. And remember that your paintings don't have to be perfect. Every single painting you work on is going to help you improve. So I really hope that you enjoyed this one. And of course, maybe learn something in the process. Just remember to not be hard on yourself when you're painting because mistakes are really the only way you learn and improve. I know that sounds like a cliche. It probably is. But to me, it also seems like the truth. I want to say thank you to the incredibly kind and generous support of the channel members. So thank you to Andrew, M. Shibley, Robert, Ken, Pete, Dwayne, Carl, Michael, Cyril, SM, Mir Creative, Mackie Mark, and Leon. And since this video is being released a few days before Christmas, I want to wish everyone watching this happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. So thank you again for watching. Be well, and I'll see you back here next week.